things that ever happened to me uh, was in Las Vegas. And I was just out there with Elvis. I wasn't even working for him then. It was 73. And I was standing at the edge of a curtain with uh, Billy Stanley, uh, Elvis' stepbrother. And uh, when Elvis walked out on the stage, I was just standing there. You know, I think Red was over there, and Red opened the curtain, and I was just standing there and walked up. And Elvis walks out on the stage. And back in those days, they didn't have the condenser mics. You know, they had the microphones with a long cord. Does everybody, everybody understand me when I say mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So he's out there, that's all right, Mama. And he's moving across the stage. And this is inside of the Las Vegas Hilton showroom, 1,800 people, you know, full orchestra. And he got to a certain point. And as we say in Memphis, the slack in that chain ran out because that microphone, the cord was stiff and it went bing and it jerked right out of his hand, flew all the way across the stage and hit like a boom. And Joe Garcia was the orchestra conductor. He dropped his baton. He looked, he looked the orchestra quit playing, the rhythm section quit playing. Elvis looked around like he thought it was a gunshot. You know, we didn't know. <laughs> Loud. The audience was horrified. And Elvis walks over and he picks the microphone up and he feels the tension. He takes the cord and does this. <laughs> All the way to the curtain. He opens the curtain up and the spotlight hits me. <laughs> he was not happy. <laughs> so uh, we got bracelets and like, uh, let's see, Dick was the fox and uh, uh, Joe Esposito, the bracelet said uh, Jaws because he was Back to Jaws and Elvis has said crazy, mine said paddle foot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what ended my career on stage right there. But, uh, but Elvis, he, he loved to mess with you like that. Another embarrassing story, since you want one, is uh, they're asking about Graceland, what it looked like. How many of you have been to Graceland? Several of you have, I know. Oh, wow. All of you have. Yeah, that's good. Well, you know, when you walk in the, the door, uh, to your left is the dining room. And the, uh, the stairway goes up, and there's a landing. And at the top of the landing, there's a door. And there's another, it goes, but that door is another stairway that goes down to the kitchen. So Dick Grobe and I are sitting in the kitchen one night, and uh, we're doing the tour sheets ready for the next tour. And I knew where, Elvis didn't drink, but Aunt Delta, Vernon's sister, she liked a little nip now and then. And I knew where she kept her bottle. <laughs> So this was late at night, she'd gone to bed. She liked Jack Daniels. So I went there and found her Jack Daniels and we put it on the, on the, on the table. And we were drinking Jack Daniels and figuring out you know, where we would have our security problems and all the next tour, where to get the buses, the limos, all that. And uh, there was a guitar there. So I picked the guitar up and John Wilkinson, the rhythm guitar player, he's been here. He was teaching me to play the guitar. So there was a song out by Kenny Rogers called Lucille. Picked a fine time to leave me, Lucille, you know, all that. So anyway, the more I drank, the more I was convinced I could sing. <laughs> and the more Dick drank, he was convinced he could sing better than me. <laughs> so I started playing that song, and Dick was singing, and I was singing, and suddenly Dick, and Dick is facing me, and I have my back to that kitchen door, and suddenly Dick quit singing. And I looked at him, and all the blood had drained from his face. <laughs> So I turned around, and there stood Elvis and my sister Linda. And they said something about hearing somebody kill a cat. <laughs> and, uh, so Elvis just shook his head. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, if you'll leave the singing to me, I'll leave the security to you. <laughs> so we said, OK. The very next tour that we were planning, that we went on, he's on stage, and he does a song, and he says, Thank you all very much. You're a wonderful audience. I'd like to bring one of my bodyguards out to sing. <laughs> I'm standing behind the curtain, and the, and Lamar Fike had the lights. And I'm standing there because he had it all set up, and the, the light goes this way and hits me. And I, my eyes were this big, and I'm like trying to get out. <laughs> and he did that several times. In fact, there's some album out there, I don't know which one it is, that says, I'd like to bring one of my bodyguards out to sing for you. And then you can hear him say, sit down, Sam. <laughs> So he would do that to me. But, uh.